it's amazing at how you've found out and they've helped to find a little niche which each of their talents and even your mom is part of the scene. It's family, you know, we came here as, as immigrants, the typical story, so the family unit, the strength of the family is very important. Uh, you know, I came here, I was 12, my brother was 16, so we were still that family unit, and it continued to be so, because we didn't have any relatives here, so it wasn't that we came, you know, uh, and you had all the support, so we really stuck together, and that continued, uh, you know, as far as, the children enter in the business, they grew up in the business, let's put it that way. And after school they would come, they would have their dinner, they do the homework. I think. But I always told them, this is not what you want to do. We're in America, an opportunity. You need to get your education. You need to get a real American job. And uh, Francine, I'm very proud they did. You know, my son, he did his master's business, Boston College, and went to Wall Street. My daughter, uh, Georgetown Syracuse, ended up with a PhD at Oxford in, in Renaissance Art History. And then they both came back. They came back on their own terms, though. Uh, uh, my son from Wall Street, I guess he wasn't happy. Uh, he had the feeling of creating his own business. We opened back a restaurant and then the, the, the business partnership with Mario Batali evolved and so on. And he has a great business sensibility. My daughter on the other side, you know, she, she was doing her dissertation research actually in Florence. You know, she did it, uh, um, her, her PhD on, on uh, Dattini actually, the, his, his, his Villa in Prato. And uh, um, when she got married, she married an Italian, Corrado, wonderful man, I love him. And uh, they were thinking about having children. They decided that they wanted to come back close to the family, close to home, to have their children. And so when they did come back and she uh, had her children, staying at home just with the children was, I guess, not enough for, for, and I saw it, but I saw an opportunity. I said, why don't you help me, Tanya? And it just came a natural. She entered and she loves it and she's great. She co-authored with me my last five books. So it's been a great, great, uh, let's say, viaggio insieme. Your cookbook, your latest cookbook, you've done 13, uh, and now this wonderful Bible of Italian cooking. How did that come about? It's well, huge. <laughs> 400 recipes. Yes, 400 plus recipes. And it is, it's, it took me three years to get there with the help of my daughter. Uh, it's, it's kind of that, you know, you have a, a folder where you put things and you say, one of these days, this I want to put somewhere. And I went to that folder and I pulled all the things out that I had along the way that I had learned that were shared with me that I thought was important. Uh, in, in really approaching a cuisine or approaching approach mm -hmm. cooking. And so it, 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 and I made it rather simple, you know, but I broke it down in describing the products, in how to buy the products, in how to clean the products, uh, the techniques, you know, the techniques of cooking. Is it braising? Is it roasting? Is it wet roasting? Is it dry roasting? Is it grilling? Is it steaming? So all of those things, I go one by one mm -hmm. and I relate it to the recipes that are in there and to kind of make a connection, but um, a connection that is uh, one of, of understanding it really, not just, okay, uh, this this recipe dictates this and I'm going to do. It's, yes, I can make this recipe, but I can use this recipe as a guideline for many other things that I want to do. And so this is how I cook, this is how my mother and grandmother cooked and you know your mother and grandmother cooked that way and as great as recipes are for a first go at it I think that people really will feel their kind of strength and empower them to go in the kitchen and use those techniques, use it and make it their own, even with other recipes. I agree. It's sort of like a big box of building blocks. And there are some very simple ones you could just put two together, but then if you get more experience, you can add on and add on. And it's really a wonderful guide to take you through the simplest from the most beginner cook to really very, very experienced chefs will learn it so is. much. Because it is, you know, it is as you add on to those building blocks, the building gets taller and taller, so your experience. But you know what, what, what I also, uh, uh, and I did it with all my heart, I included kind of pieces of my life or my experiences. So it's also a story, an evolving story that you can read in bits and pieces. Um, 
an inspiration to parents everywhere who would love their children to enter the family business. Well, you see, I think from seeing that, you know, you're, you're only good if you have a passion for something, if you want to do it. And they entered into my business life or world on their own terms. They chose what they love and they love it and they're good at it and they're the ones that are growing it now. It's, you know, it's not me. I, I would have never done all of this had it not been for them as well. Now your wonderful, long-running, Emmy award-winning TV series is just, has trained so many people, inspired so many home cooks. What's it like to be a TV chef? It was not uh, intentional or uh, in my program, you know, but, but I am a teacher. I love to communicate. And uh, do you really want to know how it started? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when I opened Felidia and I became the chef here, this was the first place that I really became the chef, although we opened restaurants in 71. But in 81, Felidia was open. And I went in the kitchen and I really profess the regionality of Italian cook. Now, you know, before that, my restaurants were kind of the Italian-American cuisine. And that's a wonderful cuisine. It's delicious, it's loved. But it is the cuisine of adaptations of the immigrants. So I wanted to say, you know, I want to cook and I want to offer the, 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 my guests what Italy eats in Italy. And so I started cooking and the risottos and the polentas and the yottas and all of these things that maybe weren't as known. And at that time, uh, the journalists began to, began to come. And it was with Julia Child that actually my entree into the, into the filming profession, if you will. Uh, and we became friends. She asked me to teach her how to make risotto. She ultimately asked me to be on her show, and we did two episodes, and that's where the producer says, you know, Lydia, you're pretty good. How about a show of your own? And uh, I thought about it, and I said yes. Tell me some tricks that you, over the years, think are the most important that a home cook should take, the Italian techniques. The Italian cuisine is seasonal, all about the products, and very simple in its execution. Uh, having said that, if one shops in the neighborhood, local products, when the season is right, when, when that peach is perfectly ripe, or that pear is perfectly ripe, or that peas is sweet, and so half of the work of the cook is done when you get the right ingredients. But also, it, it, Italy is known for its traditional ingredients, like the grana padano, aceto balsamico, prosciutto di parma, the, 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 uh, the uh, friulano prosciutto. So if I were to say specifically to uh, 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 American cooks, to cook Italian is, yes, seasonal, simple, uh, uh, wash the ingredients, but use the traditional products of Italy because they will bring the flavor of Italy right on your plate. Now I love adding vegetables to my diet and I think it's something Americans should do more and more of and so I applaud the vegetable beginning chapter, huge information on vegetables. Tell us something on how we can include more vegetables and some of the your favorite vegetables seasonal to cook with? Well, the, the Italian uh, 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 cuisine is all about vegetables, it really is. And it is a cuisine, maybe almost if you're una cucina povera between the legumes and the vegetables and the tubers, we use a lot. If you look at, 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 at a main portion in Italy, about one third is protein, be it meat or fish, and the other two thirds are the legumes, the starches, the pasta, the rice, uh, and the vegetables. Um, the Italians use, and I love to do that, and in this book I included quite a few. Make recipes, make that, that, that sauce with the vegetable included. Make the vegetable part of that shrimp dish or part of that veal dish, you know. So the inclusion of vegetables, always seasonal, within the proteins, and uh, or the starches uh, and you know I mean pasta and any kinds of vegetables risotto any kinds of vegetables will make a great risotto add some good grana cheese add some a good olive oil and you got yourself so it's a question of 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 uh, 
appreciating again seasonal always seasonal the vegetables are best when they're the season and they're most economical too they cost the least when they're and and including the actual cooking process mm -hmm. how about a pasta recipe that we don't need a recipe we don't need to write it down something that comes to mind that you like doing oh, with pasta okay. I have a thousand and one <laughs> plus uh, well again let's go back to those building blocks so you start with a little bit of oil a little bit of garlic or onion, whatever, and then you build. Now even that, garlic and oil, a little bit of the pasta water, a peperoncino, parsley, you got yourself aglio olio e peperoncino, which is a great pasta dish. You know, sometimes I just pray for that, and sometimes when I come home and I didn't eat dinner or whatever, I make a nice plate of that. Uh, but then you have those building blocks in oil and garlic and, and then let's put in a little bit of broccoli di rapa, let's put in a little bit of uh, kale, let's put in a little bit of beans, let's put in a little bit of chichi, chichi and so on. Or let's put in proteins, let's put in a little bit of shrimp or a little bit of chicken and you keep on building. Or let's go back and let's put the tomatoes instead of those vegetables and add to the tomatoes maybe more proteins and basil. So it's kind of building building. But one thing that, that uh, you know, I, I would say to be careful is not to overbuild because then you confuse everything. You had the great honor of cooking for the Pope when Pope Francis came to New York City this fall. Uh, yes, Francine, that was an extraordinary honor. I did cook also for Pope, Pope Benedict when he was, so I have... You po yeah, cooked for yeah, two yeah, popes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems to be uh, I'm the papal chef here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Francine, you know, it was um, an extraordinary honor. Even till this day, I kind of look, at, look back at it, did it really happen? And it did happen. Um, how I got chosen, I don't know. I guess it was my, my destiny, my, my gift. Uh, uh, but I loved every moment to be in, especially with Pope Francis. Um, he was so personable. He even came in the kitchen. He yeah. said, he said, posso avere un caffè con voi? And so there were five of us in the kitchen and uh, he had his coffee. He talked to each individual, asked about their lives, blessed them individually. And then as he was going away, he said, pregate per me, pray for me. Yeah. So it was, it was really, really, he's an extraordinary man. Um, you know, uh, Francine, I, I, I kind of, you know, you say, okay, so what comes to your mind when you plan this dinner? And uh, here you are in front of uh, cooking, you need to, you're going to cook, I'm going to cook for this person that we all pray to, that we all ask for uh, um, uh, sort of, sort of spiritual uh, food for spiritual, and, and, and here I needed to nurture him. But the difference was that I needed, you know, I nurtured his, his human part, his body, but I felt very, I, I, you know, the responsibility was intense because he was out there giving so much of himself. So I wanted to really Aww. concentrate all the nourishments and the flavors. I made some great capon soup with some anolini in there. I made a great risotto with porcini mushrooms, some fresh fish. It was Friday, so I made some fresh fish from Long Island. Lots of vegetables. You know, his, his, uh, his uh, ancestors are from, uh, from Piedmont. So he loved his risotto, loved squash, he loved potatoes, yeah? And he loved sweets. He has, he has oh. a sweet tooth. And but the Italian sweets are never too sweet, no, never no, too food, sugary. Food, always food. food. Yeah. So. Was there security? Did they have to taste the food? Check. There was plenty of security, but not about the food. It was, you know, once they really kind of checked checked us out because mm -hmm. it was myself. It was uh, Chef Fortunato from Felidia, and then I had uh, other chefs from from Belco Billy and. Uh, uh, Angelo Vivolo also who, who collaborated, so my son uh, with the wine, my daughter Tanya was also involved, you know, it was, uh, I, my grandchildren got to meet him, so it was, was, was an extraordinary gift for the whole family. Speaking of Italian ingredients, your partners with the wonderful emporium of Italian cuisine, Italy, here in New York, Chicago, San Paolo, in Brazil, what are some wonderful foods that people can buy Italian products to kind of make a wonderful antipasto plate or that they well, should include in their cooking? I, I think, you know, that's what we really represent and include. Um, uh, when I originally went to Torino to see the first Italy and I met Oscar Farinetti and 
oh, we had dinner together, we got to know each other, and then ultimately he says, you know, Lydia, I really would like to collaborate with somebody in New York because I think this, this idea uh, would really uh, fly in, in America. And it would, and it did. Uh, and I realized that right away. And of course, I asked the boys, which would be Mario and, and, and Joe, my son, if they were interested. And But the whole thing made, made sense because uh, Italy is connected with, with Petrini and the slow food movement. So that what we sell there, 60% is products from small, really genuine Italian artisans. And you cannot find that because there's not that much of it produced. So that's the basis. And that's across the peninsula. So whether you talk Colatura di Alici all the way down in Sicily and so on, and whether, whether you talk about the great Robiola cheeses of Piemonte, uh, whether you talk about Lenticchie di Castelluccio, the best, you know, this, we have it all. We have it all. So I think uh, Italy gives, first of all, this grande piazza. It's a piazza of Italianità, uh, but of top products. And you can buy them as a market. Uh, uh, as you would the raw products, but then we go on and we develop, we cook these products. We have a wood, uh, wood burning oven for our pizza, for our bread. So we take those ingredients and we cook them and have restaurants. But then we have a little cafe, just, you know, you want your cappuccino. We have an ice cream stay, la gelateria, in panini. So I think that uh, taking a walk through Italy is like taking a walk through a block or two in Italy, and people are feeling it, people are, are enjoying it. it. It has become a social kind of center also where people meet all'italiana, you know? You know, like le, in the strade in Italia, you sit down, you sip your coffee and you watch. That happens in Italy, and it's, it's grand. Oh, it's wonderful to have a little, a little taste of Italy right here in America.